Hey guys, what's up Roman here from Tech Guides, and in today's part two of my ultimate how to install and set up an Ubuntu server tutorial series, I will show you how to format and partition hard drives under Ubuntu. Also, I will show you how to mount your new hard drives. And in that instance, I will also show you how to combine different drives to create one big virtual drive. This basically comes in super handy if, for example, you're using your server as a cloud. And in order to extend your cloud storage, you can basically just throw in another hard drive. And using the approach that I show in this video, all you need to do is change one file and your cloud storage will be extended. As always, you can find timestamps to each topic discussed in this video in the description below. Also, if you rather like to follow along this tutorial in its written form, then definitely check out my blog where I have this tutorial and any of my other tutorials written down for your convenience. And with having said that, let's start off with how to partition and format your hard drives under Ubuntu. Now, the approach that I'm going to show you on partitioning your hard drives is basically the easiest and fastest that I could find. So on your Linux machine, the first thing you want to do is to type in sudo ftiskl to check which kind of disk you have currently set up to your home server. In my case, I have this new SDE drive, which is a 6TB Seagate drive that used to be in my Windows machine. Now to check for any partitions on that drive, type in sudo gdisk, then followed by the disk identifier, so in my case, slash def slash sde. As you can see, I have a MBR and GPT partition table. In order to delete all partitions, type in D, then the partition number, and repeat this for all partitions on the drive. Type in W to delete the partitions, and confirm by typing Y. Note that this will obviously overwrite any data on that drive, so absolutely make sure that you have a backup before proceeding. And when you type sudo ftiskl again, you can see that the drive is now ready to be partitioned. This is basically also how a new drive would look like if you simply plugged it into your server. Now to create a new GPT partition table, which I would recommend for anybody who's using an Ubuntu server, type in sudo gdisk followed by the disk identifier, type in n for a new partition, use 1 as the partition number and confirm all of the following entries. Finally, type w and confirm the writing of the new partition by typing y. Now, when you type sudo fdisk l again, you can see that we have successfully created a GPT partition table called the SDE1 partition on our new drive. In the next step, we're going to create a new XTE4 file system on our newly partitioned drive. To do so, type in sudo mkfs.xt4 followed by the drive identifier. Now absolutely make sure that you actually create a file system for the partition that you just created. So in my case, dev slash sde1. Once you have repeated this for all of the drives that you've connected to your home server, it's time for the server to mount these drives. Now in order to mount drives upon boot, you can edit the fstamp file, which you can find under the etc directory. In this file, you can either simply specify the regular dev slash sde1 etc identifiers, or even better, use the UUID, also known as the Universal Unique Identifier. You can get the UUID of each drive by typing in sudo blkid. Copy the UUID of the drive that you want to mount, and paste it in the fstab file. Remove the quotation marks, and specify the location where you want this drive to be mounted. In my case, I'm going to mount it under mount slash cloud1. The next field describes the file system, so in our case, ext4. The fourth field describes the mount option associated with this drive. In our case, we're going to use defaults. Finally, the two zeros tell the system to not always check the drive upon every boot. However, if you do want the system to check your disk, then type in either 01 if this is the root device or 02 for any other drive. Next, repeat this for any other drive that you also want to mount upon each boot. Make sure that they actually use different mount locations for your different drives. Finally, create the folders for the mount location, so in my case, mount cloud1, 2 and 3, and type in sudo mount-a in order to mount the drives to the respective mount locations. Now, in this last part of today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to glue together different drives in order to make them appear as just one drive to the Linux file system. For this, we will need to install MHDDFS. So first, make sure to update your repositories by typing in sudo apt update, followed by sudo apt install MHDDFS. Next, open the fstep file again, where you have specified the mount locations for the different drives. 
we're going to add a new line called MHDDFS, followed by a hashtag and immediately followed by the amount locations of the drive that you want to fuse. Next, specify a location where you want your fuse drives to appear. In my case, I want my fuse drive under mount slash cloud. Instead of a file system, type in fuse, followed by allow other, comma non empty. Again, we specify two zeros as we don't want this drive to be checked upon boot. Now what the allow other does is it basically allows anybody that has access to your home server to read and write files on the fused location. This is going to come in handy if for example you want Apache to be able to write to this location and at the same time you also want to write to this with your personal user. Finally, the non-empty makes sure that you're not going to be able to actually mount into a directory which already contains data. Next, create the mount directory, so in my case mount slash cloud, and type in sudo mount a in order to fuse your drives. And that's it, as you can see, I can now go into the mount slash cloud directory and I can see all of the data that is actually spread across three drives. You can check your total fused disk capacity by typing in df h. Now, if you're building your own home server, which I presume you are since you're watching this video, then I assume you're a rather privacy sensitive person. And because of that, you probably don't want to share all of your personal data with the big internet companies such as Amazon, Google and the likes. However, your internet privacy should really not end just there. See, whenever you go online over a public Wi-Fi, basically anybody is going to be able to intercept that communication and is going to be able to see what you're doing on the internet. Additionally, your internet service provider is likely keeping logs of all of your activity on the internet and can therefore trace back any website that you've ever visited. Now, the obvious solution to this problem is using a VPN or a virtual private network. Now, what a VPN does is it allows you to access a server in a certain country and then encrypts all of your connection between you and that server, making you appear to access a certain website from that country rather than the country that you're actually in. So if this sounds like something that you'd also like to take advantage of, then I can strongly recommend you IPVanish. Using IPVanish to conceal your true location and IP address is super easy. You simply download the app on any of your devices, connect to one of these servers and your connection will be encrypted. Now IPVanish provides absolutely blazingly fast connection speeds. Basically on a 130 megabits connection, I can saturate it even if the VPN is enabled. They offer up to 1,500 server locations in 75 countries and you can simultaneously connect as many devices as you want to a VPN. Also, IPVanish now keeps absolutely zero logs of your activity on the internet. And if you don't like their service, then you can get all of your money back within 30 days. Now, I personally use IPVanish whenever I use my mobile phone to connect to an open Wi-Fi. So if you also want to take back control over your online security and at the same time also supporting my channel so I can make more content like this, then check out IPVanish by going to techguides.yt slash IPVanish or clicking on the link in the description below. And with that, we have reached the end of today's tutorial. Now, I hope you guys were able to actually partition and format your hard drives. And I hope you also learned something new if you're running a cloud and want to extend your cloud storage. If you still have any questions, then don't hesitate to leave them down below. Leave a like if you liked this video, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful day and I'll see you guys in the next video.